So, we'll start getting you warm and then we'll start moving through. So there's gonna be three exercises and I'll preface everything and I'll talk you through it. But to start with, what we're gonna do, we're gonna get you warm and then we're gonna be looking at activation. So activating the shoulders, getting you in good positions. So get you warm, activation. Then we're gonna look at building strength and how you build strength through range. Because ultimately, if you wanna be doing things like a frog to handstand, or like a pike to handstand or a push up to handstand, then, um, or push press, sorry, not push up. Um, you're gonna need the strength for that ultimately. But strength is also helps restore and um, prevent injury. So you'll find that if you're working at 99% of your strength all the time, it becomes really, really difficult and your chances of injury goes up. So what we need to be doing is creating a massive well of strength that we can then go through and progress from. So Tim, head of handstands, obviously everyone knows Tim's triceps, triceps like Tim, but Tim has got loads and loads of strength in pushing. So he's able to call upon that resource so he can then go back and when he has to manage balance or doing it on different, um, if he's doing it on a block or whatever, he can then concentrate on doing it on that rather than is he strong enough? It isn't a question of is he gonna be able to drop down and push back out? He knows he's gonna be able to push back out so he can concentrate on making it look like a good um, like a good move. So. Where, uh, where can you find this guide? This guide, if you search on the School of Calisthenics bio, so if you click through, there is um, a link tree and it's specifically in there. If not, have a look at um, the new handstand guide. It's on the website and there's a lot of social media around it as well. So if not, I'll send you a direct link to me, Coach Owen, Performance OBJ. Anyway, without further ado, we will get you moving and grooving. So thank you all for joining. So to start with, what I'm gonna get you to do, we're gonna be in this piped position quite a lot today. So I'm gonna get you initially into a bear crawl. So this will help to warm up your wrists, your shoulders, and also your hamstrings. So to start with, we're gonna be going into a bear crawl. So screwing those elbows in and back, pointing back. I'm then gonna take my bum up. Can you see that? So my bum is in the air. I'm now gonna walk, depending on how much space you've got, I'm gonna either do it statically, so I'll stay in camera, but you guys can go for a little walk. So I'm gonna go opposite arm, opposite foot, and then change over, change over. So opposite arm, opposite foot, this is bear crawl. So either do it statically, or do a couple of lengths in your living room, or wherever you're doing this from, your kitchen. If you get really good, you can go backwards, so the idea is I'm moving opposite arm, opposite foot. So I'm going like that. Can you see that? But obviously I'm gonna be on the ground. So, bear crawl. Bum nice and high. Feel that stretch coming through your hamstrings. So I'm gonna walk, right arm, left foot. Left arm, right foot. Just moving backwards and forwards. Progressively loading the wrists. Also moving the hamstrings. Right arm, left foot, left arm, right foot. Nice, good, a couple more of those. So again, you can probably feel that coming through your hamstrings. You can feel so you're working cross body, but you're also creating good positions for the shoulder and also overhead. So this is like a really nice bit of uh, mobilization to start with, so moving dynamically. Okay, we're gonna do one more of those and then we're gonna move on. So again, for those who didn't catch it, this is called a bear crawl or bear walk. So, for those of you who are getting good, coming forwards, have you tried going backwards as well? So, like that, so lead bum first. Moving backwards and forwards. Again, as you start to loosen off, you'll feel that your bum from here, you have to go higher. This is one of my favorite exercises. Those who have had uh, 
I've had opportunity to work with. I love these. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna do the opposite of this, crab walk. So a crab is basically the inverted version of a bear crawl. So you're gonna be sat on your bum, so shoulders behind, so peeling back, putting your shoulder blades together. So initially, just stretching off in that position. So my fingertips pointing away. You see that on YouTube. So fingertips pointing away. So even in that stretch, that feels nice. Oscillate in and out. So again, my shoulders aren't forwards. I'm going to go crank them back, pinning them together leaning left and right and then if that feels good scoot your bum away so if you did the workout yesterday you probably feel quite a stretch coming through your pec so your pec your also front delt your anterior delt so cranking that back scooching in a little bit more good nice deep breaths nasal breathing as much as you can Left and right, again, if that feels easier, a little bit further. Throwing in a little neck rotation as well. Left to right. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna use this dynamically. So, I'll face you this time, but shoulders in the same position. I'm gonna go opposite arm, opposite foot. I'm gonna come towards you. And then if you're feeling good, reverse that. Yeah, how's that feel? Through your wrists, through your shoulders. If you're feeling that that is too easy, get your hips higher. So it really helps to open up hip flexor. We're also screwing shoulders into the ground. Opposite arm, opposite foot. Hips up, that feels good. Nice guys. Good, right. So, hopefully there's no like pain. At any point, if you get any wrist pain, elbow pain, shoulder pain, we're trying to stay away from that. Then just make a mental note what aggravated it. And say what we're not trying to do is annoy our bodies. We're constantly asking the question. The big thing about calisthenics is, if there is a problem, then what you'll find is you need to just spend a little bit more time looking into that issue. Cool, right, so. What we're gonna do, that, um, that piked position that we spent a lot of time in the bear crawl, so we're gonna go into that now. So, in order to find your pike position, so does everyone know what I mean by pike? Basically, if you fall, fold forward, that is a pike position. So, your push-up position, We'll go start with start with a position you know. So you push up position, elbows pointing backwards, straight back, shoulder width apart. We don't want to be out here. We don't want to be too narrow. So elbows screw them in by the side of your body. So we're going to take that initially, screwing elbows in, turn that into a push up position. From here, so I'm in an active position. I'm not letting my hips drop through, but what I'm going to do now is keep those elbows screwed in. I'm going to walk my bum up in the air. So notice how this is very similar to that bear crawl position we did to start with. So a really nice position. So screw those elbows in, bringing those feet together. Now you might be finding that your hamstrings are quite tight. It's okay to put a slight bend in. If you're struggling with that hamstring mobility or length, put a slight bend in. But the main thing is, screw those elbows in, walk the feet in. Now in this position, I'm gonna take my ears, and put them between my shoulders. So I'm not out here, I'm here. And then I'm gonna drive the ground away. Like a shrug motion. I want you to do 10 of those. So, I'll try and explain what I'm after. So I'm not out here, I'm here, and it's only a small movement, keeping the arm straight, and I'm driving the ground away. So it's like a shrug position. Arm straight, 
Drive away. Drive away. So the motion is coming through upper trap. Here, push the ground away. Push. Does that make sense? So I want 10 of those, like a shrug motion. So 10 of those. Right, so that's basically getting this active. A healthy shoulder is able to do what's called protraction, retraction, elevation, and depression. So we're elevating that shoulder, really pushing the ground away. Right, we're gonna do 10 more of those. Right, just getting a lot of this upper trap, upper trap, rhomboids, firing. So 10 more. So I'll do them with you this time. So bum nice and high, ears between biceps. Down, push away, 10. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six, really push the ground. Five, elbows pointing back. Four. Three. Two, one more. Good. So what I'm gonna show you now, so for some of you that might be quite easy. So what you can do is do that against the wall. Those of you who've seen my post today about handstands, we can use a wall. So nose to wall handstand, driving up the wall. I'm not expecting you all to do that and I'm struggling for space here, but what you can do is this. So either a coffee table or a chair or something like that. Again, our body weight is fixed. So how do we scale it up and down? We use lever length. So this time, rather than being on my toes, I'm gonna to put my toes, there it is, on the chair. And that's gonna increase the amount of weight that I have to deal with now. So we're gonna do 10 more. Now it doesn't matter whether you do that, that first version I showed you or you make it harder. The third version is that you can go up against the wall and do that same motion, but we're still just keeping it in the upper traps. Here, drive away, drive away. It's not a massive motion. Notice how I'm just basically taking my ears out. Boom, boom, okay? We're gonna do 10 more, right. So a coffee table or a chair, or just something to get your hips up. So bum in the air, I'm gonna do 10, okay? 10, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, keep going. Push the ground away, four, three, two, Last one. Good, take your time, step away. Nice. So if any, any of you those who made, made that harder, you can really feel that in those upper traps, right? You can feel it in your, in your front delt, your anterior delt, but I can really feel that coming through that upper trap. Boom, really pushing the ground away. Cool, so. That's basically just activation. And we should be active when we're doing a handstand. We should be really, boom, driving away, really active in those positions. Right, what we're gonna do now is start building specific strength. So we're gonna go into that pipe push up again, but we're gonna increase the amount of range. So rather than just being here, what we're gonna do is start bringing triceps, Boom, shoulders in, boom, like this. So we're gonna do three sets and I'll show you how we can scale it up and down. So to start with, how many of you have done like pike push-ups before, like full range? Let me know in the comments if you have, if you have not. Uh, so someone's asked what this for. This is basically activating the traps. When we're in a handstand, we should be active. We should be actively pushing that ground away. We can't just be hanging out, just cruising around. That's when we start to get like a sloppy handstand. We should be here, boom, pushing the ground away. Does that make sense? Right, 
So we're gonna start building the amount of range now. Good work, James. Right, so this time, so I'm starting this push-up position. I'm gonna walk the bum back. So notice here, I'm gonna let my head fall forwards, but then push back. So my weight is on my toes. Just move that so Weight is on my toes. I'm gonna let my head come forwards and then push back. Come forwards, push back. Anyone who's done military press in a gym, obviously we don't have access to equipment when you're at home, but some of you may have done these before. So we need to finish with our head coming forwards and then push back like this. Come forward, push back. If we were to do this with a barbell, we can't just go through our head like this. We'd end up with a very sore head. So that's why we end up coming forwards and then push back. I'll show you again. Or you can join with me. So we're gonna do three sets of these. I'll show you the first one and then I'll show you how to scale it and then I'll show you a harder version. Hopefully that makes sense. So, we're gonna be so push up position, walking the feet in, screwing those elbows back. I'm gonna come forwards and push back. Come forwards, push back. If you're struggling with that push, we will use the eccentric. So you're 40% stronger on the way down than you are pushing up. I'll show you what I mean. So. If you're struggling pushing back up, if you're doing this, you're coming down, but then you're turning it either into a push up, or you physically can't get up, what we can do is scale it. So what I want to see is you coming down and back up on that same line. What I don't want to see is you come down and then turn it into a push up. So I'll show you the difference. This is what I want. Bump up, coming down, pushing back. Down, back. This is what I don't want. Pushing down, pushing up. Down, up. What's happening is your brain, your brain's not daft. Your brain goes, Oh, I find it loads easier to do a push-up than I do a pike push-up. So I'll just turn it into a push-up because I know what to do in that position. I'm loads better at that. So what we're trying to do is build good patterns. The more we can establish a good pattern, the more longevity we have, and it also is more transferable. If you want to do frog to handstand, or like any number of pushing patterns. So we need vertical pushing, not horizontal pushing. So we're gonna go through between six and 10 reps of this. So either just go down on the eccentric. So I'm doing a lot of talking, so bear with me. So if you're struggling to push back out, drop your knees, but always good technique. So bum is up. Come down, drop the knees, push up, reset. Down, drop, reset, up. Down, drop, reset, up. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So if you're struggling to push back out, you can really feel that in your triceps, right? Triceps, delts. So we're gonna do 10 now, whether you do that eccentric only or the lowering phase or you do the full pipe push-up between six and ten reps okay we'll do that now some of you have probably already done it so you need to do another set <laughs> right ready in three two one let's go bum in the air screwing those elbows in i'm gonna let my head fall forwards and then i'm pushing back ears between biceps Falling forwards, pushing back, head between biceps. That's two. Falling forwards, pushing back. Again, keeping that bum nice and high. Forwards, three. 
four, five, six, good, keep going if you can, seven, eight, two more, nine, one more, ten, good guys, very, very good. So you can feel the difference. You could probably really feel it in here, in those shoulders. Also mid trap, uh, upper trap, boom, driving away. So it's a really good exercise to get strong. So option one, you control the eccentric. Always trying to keep those hips up. So for those of you who are stronger and want like a harder variation, that's when we're gonna bring more range of motion in. So some of you may have parallettes, so you can increase the range that you drop through, but I don't know all of you have got parallettes, so you can use something like yoga blocks to increase that range of motion, because what we need is progressive overload. If every time you go to the gym, you just do the same thing, your body's got no reason to change or get better. So what we're trying to do is constantly get a little bit better every time we train. So, we're gonna do one more set. Either keep doing what you're doing, controlling that eccentric, or that one I've just shown you. Or, third option, we can increase the range. So you can either increase the range by putting something under your hands. So you have to go further forwards and further down, push back. You can make it harder by putting your feet elevated. But what I don't want to see, okay, obviously I can't, I can't see you. But what I don't want to see is you scale it too much and you lose technique. And I'll show you what I mean on here. If you're doing really good ones on here, that's fine. So bump up, come forwards, push back forwards, push back. What I don't want to see is this. Come forwards, push up. Forwards, okay. Notice the difference there. The first one, I was coming down, boom, push back. Boom, second one, I was coming down and turning it into a push forward. I was coming down, nice, but then push forward like that. Okay, so just bear in mind, be very critical with yourself. So we're gonna do one more set. Whether you do it on elevated, whether you do it on the floor, or whether you just do the eccentric. Okay, one more set. Ready? Three, two, one. Between six and 10. All you can do, you can, you can bring in high and increase the rum as well. So bump nice and high, pull forwards, push back. Forwards, push, two, three, four, good, five, one more, six. Keep going if you've still got it. Again, we're looking between, to work between between five and 10 reps on these. Really good sort of strength range. Good, really good. So we'll just have a uh, quick water. Mm. So quick recap. Initially, we warm the wrists up and warm the shoulders. Then we started moving dynamically with those animal movements, bear crawl, and then the crab. So preparation, did a little bit of movement. Now this, obviously what we did, we engaged that upper trap. Then from there, we started building strength through range, a greater range of motion, or greater ROM for short, range of motion, R-O-M. Okay, but always, always, always trying to reinforce good technique. Is that better? 
Always try and reinforce good technique all the way through. So what we're gonna do now is do some isometric work. So we're getting to a stage where potentially getting tired through the triceps. So we're gonna engage this front delt, anterior delt a little bit more. So we're gonna be in this plank position. So initially I'm gonna be here, but then I'm gonna lean forwards. Notice how I'm not dropping the hips. I'm gonna keep pushing the ground away. I'm protracting. So again, not just hanging out, I'm pushing the ground away. So you'll feel this in, in here, okay? In the delt, boom, pushing away. So we're gonna do this for 20 seconds. Is everybody ready? So remember, when we want to do a nice handstand, it's a full body exercise. Engage the glutes, engage the core, pushing the ground away. Everything's working as one cohesive unit. Any weak links in that chain, it'll be very, very evident. So, we're gonna do three isometric holds. We're gonna do 20 second hold, 20 second hold, 20 second hold. Right, is everybody ready? So remember, glutes on. So pushing the ground away. Ready in three, two, one. Push the ground away. So you might just be in plank position. Elbows pointed back. If you want to lean forwards, you can really feel that in your delts. Go on, keep holding. 15 seconds left. Push, 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 push. 12, 11, 10. Abs on. Keep squeezing that bum together. Eight. Seven, keep pushing. Six, five, four, lift forward, lift more if you want. Three, two, one. Bring it back, knees down. 20 second hold. I'll talk to you in the rest. So you can feel that. You can feel that in your abs, pushing the ground. Remember how I made it harder by leaning forwards a little bit. Feel it more here. So straight arm strength this time. Okay, so we're gonna go again. In seven seconds, six, five, four, three, two, one. Again, elbows pointed back, glutes on. If you need to, lean forward to make it harder, but don't compromise the hips. Keep pushing the ground away. 15 seconds, 30. Keep those elbows screwed in. 10 seconds. Six seconds, five, push ground, lean forward, four, three, two, one. Good, reset, woo, we've got one more, We're getting warm now, woo. So, you can feel that difference coming through. So, uh, someone's asked the question, what do you mean by screw the elbow? So, rather than elbows coming out to the side, like this, what I want to do is elbows, screw like driving into the ground take my elbow point it backwards that basically takes that humeral head boom position it back so not here i want to be here so we're going to do the final set now so screw those elbows in glutes on 20 seconds lean forward if you can 19 18 pushing the ground away I'm not hanging out in my shoulders here, I'm pushing away. 14 seconds left. Good, stay active. 12, 11, keep going. 10, again, elbows pointing back. Push, push, push. Eight. Five seconds, good. Glutes on, four, three, two, one. Good, reset, knees down. Woo! So what we'll do, we're gonna do one more round, but we're gonna put those three exercises together. So we're gonna do upper traps, pike push-ups, and then that static hold. Hopefully that makes sense. So we're gonna do one more round, but we're gonna do A, B, C. We're gonna put them all together. So basically we just, uh, I introduced each exercise, but now we're gonna do it as a circuit. Okay, hopefully you got your water ready. Mm. Very good. 
Right, so final bit of work. Two minutes and you're done. So, to start with, upper traps. Engage these traps, then we're gonna go to pipe push-ups, and then we're gonna finish with that. Okay? Woo, who's ready? This guy is. Right, so upper traps to start with. Again, feel free to scale if you wanna make it harder. I know some of you are absolute beasts. Sean, if you're listening, I know you're a beast. James, you're a beast as well. So, to start with, engage those traps, then we're gonna bring the triceps in, and then we're gonna do an isometric hold, then we're done. Right, two minutes of work, let's go. So, toes up. Again, I'm using the sofa uh, the chair, but if you wanna use a wall, you can do. So, pull them nice and high. I'm just gonna keep my arms straight to start with, engaging through here. 10 reps, 10, nine, eight, ears finished between the biceps, seven, six, five, four, keep going, three, two, one, three, two, one more, good. So you can probably feel that in your abs as well. You're trying to suck abs, in all the time, elbows pointing back, boom. We're gonna go into those pipe push-ups now. Remember, work to your level, whether you just do the eccentric or whether you're trying to do increase the range of motion, work to your level, but I wanna see good technique. So, we're gonna do 10 reps, or well, between, between five and 10 reps, okay? So bump up, let's go. So, start and finish is between biceps. Forwards, push back. Ten. Nine. Good. Screw those elbows in. Eight. Seven. Six. Keep going. Five. Four. Three, two, one. Let's go. Three, two, up. Two, one more. Woo! Good. Slowly bring yourself down. Final exercise. We're going to go into those isometric holds. So plank position. Abs on. Glutes, boom, switched on. Elbows pointing back. Final exercise. 20 seconds. Let's go. So, from here, pushing into the ground, leaning in. Again, Pushing that ground away, stay active in the shoulders. 18 seconds. 15, keep pushing. 14, lean forward if you wanna make it harder. 12, 11, 10, abs on, glutes on. Eight seconds, keep going. Five, four, all the way. Three, two, and one, good, bring the knees down, sit back, give yourselves a round of applause guys, really good bit of work that, so, well done for you guys, really really good bit, so, just to reiterate some points, that circuit that we just did, feel free to put that together, you can either break it down as we did to start with, you can either go Activation, main working set, and then some holds at the end. Or, as we just did, we can go A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C, and just keep doing that as a circuit. So you can really feel that in the shoulders, right? Working really, really hard. So again, sometimes we need to pair both skill and strength. If you've got loads and loads and loads of skill, but you're, you're not strong enough to do anything with it, it can be very difficult. Same way if you're really strong, but you haven't worked on the skill. We need to be constantly working both these two elements. Hopefully that makes sense. So, if you take one thing away from here, it's being active in these positions. Think about what the shape you're trying to make. Boom, really push, engage, yeah, nice one. Boom, that's becoming my thing now. So, pushing the ground away, screwing the shoulder in, 
creating good positions the whole time, even when we're tired. And be honest with yourself. So, what we did to start with, those shrugs overhead. And then from there, we work through greater range. So you can feel it more in triceps. And then from there, a few holds at the end, just to link everything together. So hopefully that makes sense. Remember, tomorrow, uh, it's Tim tomorrow. So Tim will be taking you through some headstand work. So this is where, like the wider the base, the higher the peak. So the more things we're exposed to, the better we can get in general. So tomorrow with Tim, Thursday with Jacko, and then Friday with me. Fun Friday, full body conditioning. So I wish you a flipping amazing day. The sun is trying to come out. So if you're in the UK, enjoy a bit of sunshine. So YouTube, I really appreciate it. Don't go anywhere. Instagram, don't go anywhere. YouTube, thank you so much. Really appreciate it, guys. Have a great day. Remember, handstand up to Corona. So tag me, Performance OBJ. Tag School of Calisthenics. Tag Player Layer. Please let me know how you're getting on. I would love to see your progress from what you've learned today and in general with your handstand. So handstand up to Corona. All the best. Remember, handstand program is out now, School of Calisthenics. Have an awesome day. I wish you strength and health during this time.